AMC 10A 2020 Problem 17. We find piece of x function, how many integers are there that satisfy the following criteria? So when I see a function such as this, that's given all the zeros, I immediately know that graphing it would be my best bet. And why do I know that? The reason why I know this is because we cannot simply deduce the range of x for which this criteria is met by simply looking at the function. I can only deduce it if I graph it and find out the regions for which it's below the x-axis. So that is why I'm graphing it. So the, the, the x-intercepts will be the solutions, or when p of x is equal to 0. So that will be 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. And to determine the behavior of the graph, we can simply plug in numbers that are between these ranges, between each 0 and find out how the function is behaving. So we could put two here, we could put five here, we could put 10 here, we could put 20 here. These are just arbitrary numbers that I made up in my mind. That's between these ranges. So x minus one squared with two, what would be p of two? Well, from logically, what is x minus one squared when p is two? It will be a number that's greater than zero because two is greater than one squared. What about x minus two squared? Well, x minus two squared will give a quantity that's less than zero because two is less than two squared. A smaller number minus a larger number will give a negative quantity or a number below zero. And this will continue all the way to 100 squared, meaning that there is one positive quantity and 99 negative quantities. And I know there are 100 quantities because the, there are 100 perfect squares, and it's inclusive from 1 to 100, so there are 100 terms. And nine, an odd number of negatives will give us a negative overall. So piece of 2 will overall be below zero. So... It, the function must increase and drop to 1 and decrease from 1 and rise up to 4 because that's the only way it can behave in order to match and hit all the x-intercepts. Likewise, we can try it for piece of 5. W well, how many numbers is 5 greater than the perfect squares? Well, it's greater than 1 squared and 2 squared, so we have two positive numbers. But 5 is less than 3 squared, 4 squared, all the way on to 100 squared, meaning we have 98 negative terms. An even number of negatives will give us a positive, so piece of 5 overall will be greater than 0. So this function must rise and decrease to 9, and you can see where this is going. It will decrease, rise, decrease, rise, kind of like a sinusoidal function, like sine, sine of x. So from this graphically visualized function, we can now deduce the range for which the piece of x is below 0, which is within this red shaded region. And this comes to show why graphing is so important within AMC and within mathematics overall. So since the, these bounds are less than equal to zero, these bounds are inclusive. So from what range is, is the red bound true? Well, that would be 1 squared to 2 squared. You have 3 squared to 4 squared because 9 to 16. 25 to 36, that's 5 squared to 6 squared. And you can see where this is going. This will go all the way to 99 squared to 100 squared. We can gather this from our graphical evidence. And from this, what is the number of numbers between these inclusive ranges? Well, that would be the upper bound minus the lower bound plus 1. So in this case, it will be 4 minus 1 plus 1, 9 minus 4 plus 1, and then it will be 16 minus 9 plus 1, and then it will be, let's see, it will be 36 minus 25 plus 1. So this will give me 4, this will give me 8, this will give me 12, this will give me 16. Or let's see if I did it right. So that'll be uh so 3 squared, 4 squared. So this shouldn't be here. My bad. I kind of rushed this through. So this is supposed to be 8, and this is supposed to be 12. So you can see how this trend is going. It'll be 4, 8, 12, all the way to 100 squared minus 99 squared, which is the same thing as 100 squared minus parentheses 100 minus 1 squared. So how do we find out what this n bound is? Well, this will be 100 squared, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus parentheses 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 200 plus 1, which is the same thing as if these two terms will be canceled, minus will be, become plus, and then minus 1 will be 199, and then we must add it with 1 because it's inclusive to get 200. So this arithmetic sequence, 4, 8, 12, and then 16 will go all the way onto 200. And we can find the summation of the arithmetic sequence like this. And we can find this by the first number plus the last number, multiply the number of numbers divided by two. But how many numbers are, are there within this arithmetic sequence? Well, n is given by the last number a sub n minus a sub one divided by the common difference of d plus one. And what is the last number? The last number is 200 minus the first number, which is four. This gets a 196 divided by the common difference, which is four, gives 44 plus one, which is 45 meaning that there are a total of 45 numbers. So 
to multiply this by 45. 200 plus 4 will be 204, divided by 2 will be 102, times 45 will give us the answer. So this will be 15, and this will be 408, will give me 4590. So we can scroll up to see, uh, or did I do the math wrong? Because uh, I did do this in advance, so should give out the correct answer. So 102 times 45 is 6. Five. Yeah, there's my answer. So, eight, uh, eight zero four. I want to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So this will be four four six, four six four zero, or this should be one. Yeah, it should be one. So eight zero four. I think I got the number wrong. So how I got the n will be a's of one plus n minus one times the common difference, which is a's of one which a's of n minus a's of 1 will give me uh, n d minus d. And then from here, we can actually divide both sides by d, and plus 1 will give me n. So my formula is correct, but let's see if I did the arithmetic right. So 200 minus 4 divided by the common difference of 4 plus 1. This gives 196. So 196 divided by 4, we put 4 here, 16, 36, is 9. Yes, so there's supposed to be 50 terms, not 45. There's my arithmetic error. So 50 divided by 2 will, or will be, well, I'll keep the 50 here. I'll show you why. So 204 times 50 over 2. So this will become 102. 102 times 5, there we go. So it will be, uh, so let's see. So 204 times 50, so, so it's 102 times 50, so 150. Zero. So it's 50. Zero, Zero one five one zero zero, and that should be correct, which means that our answer will give us to answer choice E.